Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today we've got space weather impacts and more expected, diagnosis of the induction patterns of the solar impact we've already taken, cosmological mysteries, and a solar superstorm model event. But we are starting, as always, with the last 24 hours on our star, and we find it was a calmer day. Much fewer solar flares all at the limbs. Anyway, coronal hole turning through with some less developed active regions. So let's take a closer look here at those sunspots and then the solar wind. First, we'll see the bigger spots are departing to the right. The incoming spots are on the south to the left. Smaller, less developed, but there are several of those active regions we'll be monitoring today to see if there is development of the sunspots. Meanwhile, We'd been expecting some CME impacts, and we've got a couple little wiggles, but earlier this morning, just two or three hours ago, the first notable shock wave arrived in the solar wind. Another is expected today, and then the coronal hole stream tomorrow. But the impact earlier this morning took the magnetic field from an absolute slumber to a light sparring match. Definitely a weak CME, but our field is awake now. Again, two more impacts expected over the next 36 to 48 hours minor induction into the geoelectric system here. Northwest Canada taking the worst due to magnetic latitude and geological resistance, but it's noteworthy that the lighter signals in the United States seem to perfectly match the recent solar storm vulnerability map from the USGS. Yellow and white take the hardest hits first. Up next, folks. Cosmologists are such a gold mine for entertainment. Those tiny red light signatures all over the deep, distant space which are showing up in the James Webb data are not fitting their model of how the universe works and what should be there. So what do they conclude? They didn't make a mistake, no. These must be brand new kinds of objects in the cosmos that they never thought of before. Of course, why didn't I think of that? I wonder why their perfect model didn't predict those before though. Lastly in the links today, the ESA ran a solar superstorm model simulation. Not a mega flare, but something closer to the 2003 Halloween flare in X45. Its travel time for the CME was only one day from the sun to the earth with all power grids impacted, all satellites impacted, and all aviation impacted. 11 years after the US government said, we're not ready, Europe is even further behind that mark more than a decade later. Folks, tickets to the winter tour would be a great birthday present. Most of you know how much I enjoy the Observer events and meeting all of you. These are four hour masterclasses on surviving the coming disaster event on Earth, five cities in five months. Get your tickets at the link below. The experience starts today at Observer Ranch. After that, we only have a few events left this year. Come out for the end of our rookie season, ObserverRanch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.